Hello and welcome, citizens of the stars! With patch 3.10, there were a lot of changes to the flight model. In this video, I'll try to cover both the basics and the more advanced aspects of flight. Here's what I am covering in this tutorial. In favor of making a concise video, I'll avoid certain topics. With that said, here's what I got for you. Let's start with the game settings. Here you can configure a lot of things like proximity assist, look ahead, auto zoom, information about your locked targets like distance, direction and path trails, among other things. On the Controls tab, you can set your inversion settings, input sensitivity and their curves. You can also configure multiple subcategories by adjusting their main branch. But also fine-tune each subsetting for increased precision and customization. As for key bindings, there's just way too many, so I will only mention a few. In the advanced controls, you can change almost every keybind in the game. Please beware, by default, a lot of functions are not bound to any key. Take a good look at all of them, you might find something useful. For instance, Cycle Mouse Mode. A most crucial function for mouse users. There are two mouse modes, one makes it so that the cursor is always centered, while the other one allows for exponential movement. The further away it is from the center, the faster you'll move, and it persists in free look mode. Switch between them to snap and center your axis, which is useful in many ways. Use it to maintain an accurate flight. It is very handy, especially in third-person mode. Now for the new ship interface. These show your current speed. This is your thrust, the gravity being exerted on your character, the toggle status for landing gear, coupled and decoupled modes, and enhanced stick precision. Here's the targeting modes, locked, target and auto gimbal. Also your current quantum and hydrogen fuel. When your locked target is inside the circle, auto gimbal does its best to automatically aim your weapons for you. In target mode, your weapons will try to fire at a crosshair position. It works while in free look mode. It also functions to aim your mining laser. As for locked mode, weapons will always fire at the center. Targeting modes are dependent on ship and weapons. You can individually turn weapons on or off, useful for lower ammo and power usage. By changing the group your weapons are assigned to, you can alter the way you fire them. In all firing modes, the crosshair will soft lock. It shrinks and turns greener the closer it is to the predicted impact point. PIP for short. You can change between PIP modes in the Game Settings tab. Missile lock by clicking the middle mouse button and launch it by long pressing it. Deploy flares to divert incoming missiles. Using shaft scrambles the enemy lock on you. On some ships, toggling weapons actually hides or shows them unveiling your weapon readiness to outsiders. When doing the flip and burn in first person, align your ship 
with your negative motion vector. That is, those two little arrows facing away from each other. As we're leveraging the main engine's thrust, this is the fastest way to slow down. It is also more effective and less straining than using the space brake. By manipulating your positive motion vector, you can fly your ship in unusual ways. Use W, A, S, D, space and control and take into account the direction your ship is facing. Don't forget that every ship is different. Gravity, atmosphere and other factors like a missing wing or a misfiring thruster. Many things can affect the maneuvers you can get away with. If applicable, failing to correctly manipulate your VTOL position will create drastically different situations. Not all ships have VTOL toggling, and some that do aren't as obvious as you'd think. With coupled mode, flying is easier as your ship will stabilize and maintain itself afloat even when you're not pressing any key. Whereas with decoupled, flying takes more effort as you'll have to keep close attention to your positive motion vector. In atmosphere, this mode requires more thrust, spending more fuel. But it's effective in zero-g and low atmosphere environments, as you can preserve your motion without resistance from the engines. Proximity assist lowers your maximum thrust while near the ground. With coupled mode, takeoffs and landing become smooth and more precise. Whereas with decoupled mode, it makes takeoff specially harder. Turning off proximity assist makes the engines use their maximum thrust in all situations. Leave it off if you prefer to fly in decoupled mode. Cruise control allows your ship to keep accelerating to a defined limit, or as fast as it can go, and will remain even when no one is piloting. In this case, it will be limited to your ship's maximum safe speed. Note that cruise control cannot be used in decoupled mode. To finish, let's cover some other basics, like ship MFDs. While holding F, press the middle mouse button to zoom in. W, A, S and D to move between panels. By using this method, you can use your mouse wheel to scroll these items, instead of zooming in and out. You can contact air traffic control by pressing F11 and searching in your friends list. Alternatively, you can use the comms panel in your ship. Tap B to start quantum spooling. Once it's done, hold B to initiate the quantum jump. Interrupt the jump by turning off your engines. Note that for some reason, this doesn't always work. The bar on the left shows two colors, blue for safe and red for unsafe speed. On safe speeds, your ship is easier to control and it reacts faster. You can use your speed limiter as a brake. It is specially useful with decoupled mode, as it adds stability to a descent. And well, this is all I have to offer, at least for now. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and more importantly learned something new.
I will leave you with this landing. And with that said, I bid you farewell. Cheers, and thank you for your time.